Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 44th and Broadway. Our address is 4401 West Broadway. Our regular hours of service are 10 a.m. We have our morning Bible study. 11 a.m. We have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. We have our Sunday evening worship. Also, on Wednesdays, we have midweek Bible study service at 7 p.m. The Western Church of Christ also presents a call-in Bible talk show called More Bible Talk. More Bible Talk is presented on WLLV. That is 1240 on the AM dial. More Bible Talk is presented on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The call-in show allows people to call in and their Bible questions are answered in a Bible manner. The Western Church of Christ also has a website. The website is www.westncoc.com. Feel free to use this website as you can retrieve sermons that are presented from the pulpit. We offer it in video format as well as in audio format and streaming data. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'll be reading scripture from Proverbs 15 verse 31 through 32. Again, that is Proverbs 15, verses 31 through 32. And it reads, The ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. Whoever, whoever ignores the instruction despises himself, but he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. I just read Proverbs 15, verses 31 through 32. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our song books to page 202. Page 202. Yeah. 
Pray to Heavenly Father that I will give us strength this day and every day as we stand as lights in this world, claiming that your Son died for us. We pray to Heavenly Father for those that are sick and shut in this number. We pray to Heavenly Father that I will continue to bless them and strengthen them as only you can. We pray to Heavenly Father for those that are traveling. We pray to Heavenly Father that I will take them and bring them back to be thy holy and divine will. We pray to Heavenly Father for the elders of this congregation. Mm -hmm. We pray to Heavenly Father that thou continue to strengthen these men. Yes. And that these men will continue to lead thy people according to thy word. Mm -hmm. We pray to Heavenly Father for the evangelists of this congregation. Mm -hmm. We pray to Heavenly Father that I will continue to pray on his head with wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that he would stand faithfully, continuously proclaiming thy word. Mm -hmm. We pray to Heavenly Father for each and every member. We know that Heavenly Father that we have a job to do as Christians. We pray to the Heavenly Father that the world can see thy Son in us. We pray to the Heavenly Father that we will always do that which thou would have us to do. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, for your Son. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, for what he did for us on the cross that no one else could do. We pray to the Heavenly Father for those that request prayer. We pray to the Heavenly Father that I will bless them and whatever blessing they stand in need of. But we know, the Heavenly Father, that I can do anything with thy will, not fail us. For that Father, we are grateful, and we say thank you. Amen. 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 Let's turn to page 273 as we make preparation for the Lord's Supper. 273. There is a name I love to hear, I love to seek His word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved 
It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And now we've come to the part of the service where we are to observe and partake of the Lord's Supper. To be in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To remember the sufferings that he took upon himself in order to save us. The humiliation that he took upon himself to save us. And so let us be in remembrance. As we remember, let us remember that he gave up his body, which the bread represents, and he shed his blood for us, which the fruit of the vine represents. Let us now go to the Father in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. Yes. Let us remember, Heavenly Father, without the shedding of the only begotten Son of Jesus Christ, we would still be in our sin. Help us, Heavenly Father, to live each and every day in remembrance of that sacrifice, that we might let our light so shine before men, and we might be pleasing in thy eyesight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That will be the song of invitation immediately after the lesson. And now, if you would, let us turn to page 392. Three, nine, two. If it's convenient for you and comfortable, please stand at this moment. Three hundred and ninety-two. Here a and full as I look for a home, just a home. Yeah. 
together on this morning, thanking God for another wonderful, wonderful Lord's Day. Amen. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, he came to this earth, lived as you and I are living today, to give his life for the sins of the world. And there have been so many times in the lives of men that it is seen that people are ungrateful, unthankful. But our God still waits for men to get their lives in order. And as that is taking place, each one of us need to be mindful of the next man. So this morning we're going to look at the prodigal son, the prodigal son. And I, I believe that we may be able to, if we look hard enough, and sometimes we don't have to look that hard, we may be able to, to find somebody that may resemble this son. And that somebody could be you, could be me. I was, Anita and I were talking in the kitchen last night and, and she made a reference to something and, and I made a remark back and she put up the mirror. And I said, I believe I said, if I didn't say it, I would think it, we're not talking about me. It was about you. <laughs> but there are times where we may be told something and we may make a response and we may have to go back and look in the mirror to make sure that that person is not us, that is at fault, or maybe that person is us when we're doing right. But the prodigal son, the, the word prodigal, deals with spending money or resources freely and recklessly, wasteful and extravagant. Is that anybody in here? Do we just spend money like, you know, it's no tomorrow? Wasteful, freely, recklessly? I don't think that we would do anything like that as children of God. As, as people that know that there are bills that need to be paid, that there are things that we may need in the future, but yet we just throw our money away. You know, I'm learning a lot from, from Justin and Dante, and I, I know I, I mention them quite often. Dante says he's saving his money to buy a mansion. <laughs> and I want him to buy that mansion because uh, we, we had a talk about that. And when he buy that mansion, there's going to be the pool house out back where Anita and I are going to be able to stay. But we can't stay in the mansion. Maybe his mom and daddy can stay with him. I don't know. He, he didn't even mention y'all. I just want y'all to know that right now. But I already made my reservation for the pool house. But that's a good idea to save your money to do something nice in this world. But let's look at and let's talk about the prodigal son. Let, let's talk about prodigal people. Because when we, we consider the prodigal son, a lot of times we don't really understand what this young man was all about. Just like we don't understand sometimes when we have to practice church discipline against somebody, that somebody may not understand what it's really for. This, this, this parable here 
talking and dealing with the prodigal son uh, in the book of Luke chapter 15. It comes after two other parables have been taught. The, the parable of the lost sheep or the parable of the lost coin. Something that was lost and somebody had to find it. Well, the difference here is the prodigal son was lost and he had to find himself. And I'm not saying that no one was out looking for him. The father, when we get to the end of it, the father was waiting. He was looking out across the way. And when he seen him coming, the Bible says that he ran to him. But there's a difference when we think of those three parables again two is dealing with something that is lost somebody was looking for it or somebody should go looking for it in the parable of the lost sheep and, and then the parable of the lost coin somebody was looking for it and then the, the parable of the prodigal son he was looking for himself you know, a lot of times we do not understand who we are and we have to say, Mama, Daddy, let me go. Give me my freedom. I got some growing up to do. I was once told a long, long time ago, it's time for me to get grown. It's all good. It's all good. Because we each have a life to live, and, and as we live that life, we have to make sure that somebody somewhere is looking at us. Somebody somewhere want us to, you know, exceed or be successful in life, and somebody somewhere else may be looking and want us to fail in life. I want us to look at that verse again there in the book of Proverbs that Justin read, and appreciate your reading there, Brother Justin. In, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 and 32, once again. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 and 32. L listen to these verses. In verse 31 of Proverbs 15, it says, The ear that listens to life-given reproof will dwell among the wise. Whoever ignores instruction despises himself. But he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. Life given reproof. I believe one version, as you read it, it, it will say something reference to life. Just, just life. Looking at what life has to offer, and hopefully you're learning from those life experiences. Hoping that you understand that there is something better for you if you're out there and things are not going the way the Word of God says that it could be going. A lot of times it's because of what we do that, that we don't have what we desire. A lot of times it's about what we do, the, the people we hang around, that, that we're not successful, that other people are looking down at us. So we have to understand as we think about the prodigal son that he had it made. He had it made, man. And I believe that many times we have it made, but we don't like it made. We don't like three hot meals a day. We don't like a nice place to lay our head at night. So therefore, we want something different. Well, what was what, what that commercial? I want my money and I want it now. And when I read this, that's what I think about from time to time. The, the young son, the young son, oh, things ain't going to work out for y'all this morning. The young son wanted what the father had to offer him. Y'all don't want to see it like that. Don't worry about it. We're, we're going to make this work for me. And you will be able to benefit from it. When we look at this and think about it, the prodigal son, the prodigal son was selfish. He was selfish. Knowing that the father had a will. 
knowing that the father was going to leave not only him something, but also his brother. He's going to leave both of them something. Amen. But the prodigal son, the one that somehow or another had looked out across the way, and said, there has to be something better than this. There has to be something better than, than living with my father and my brother. I don't know where his mother was. But there has to be something better. He was selfish. In the book of James, chapter 3, and verse 16, and we're going to come back and we're going to read the prodigal son in just a moment, but I want you to look at James, chapter 3, and the verse is 16. What, what does the Bible say about selfishness? James chapter 3 and the verse is 16. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vow practice. Every vow practice. Now I don't know if everybody that was behind me seen this brother follow me this morning. <laughs> you know what that brother's response was? I haven't been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't ever think that, not for one moment. But what I did do is I tried to catch him. Yeah, that's a lot of catching, isn't it? But, but I tried to catch him. I couldn't do nothing but catch him because he fell on me. And what we have to do and what we have to understand that when somebody is fallen, somebody needs to catch them. Amen. When somebody is selfish, we need to be able to tell them that they're selfish. Because he says again, but where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vow practice. The young son could have had jealousy in his heart. He could have been jealous of the older brother because he was older. Not, not because he was going to get more, but because he was older. He could have been jealous of him maybe because he was smarter. Maybe because he was listening to what the father said. Maybe, you know how young kids are, the baby, you know the baby is sometimes the, the one that's full and the one that wanted his way all the time. And maybe the young brother wasn't getting him that. So therefore, he asked for his inheritance. He asked for his inheritance. In Romans chapter 5 and the verses 8, the father loved both sons. But he, he loved the, the younger son enough to, to give him his freedom. You know, God has done that for us. He has loved us enough to give us our freedom. He has loved us enough to, to give us the, the right to make a choice. Whether we want to live for him or we want to live for the devil. He has given us that right. Amen. But we also find within loving us, giving us that right, he has done something for us. In Romans chapter 5 and the verse is 8. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Man. That's a lot of love, isn't it? Man. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure that it, it hurt the heart of the father to hear his son ask for his inheritance. You know, generally, you know, you don't get what's left to you after that person dies. Amen. So the young son is, is, is saying something that, that some sister said many, many, many years ago when we asked her about her husband. She said, he's dead. Later on, we found that he wasn't dead. And, and we asked her about that, and she said, he was dead to me. So what the youngest son is saying right here by asking for his inheritance and not only asking for it, but by leaving home, my family's dead to me. I don't need them. 
So you never know how much you need your family until your family is not there or until what you have is ran out and those friends that you thought you had, they're no longer around you. Then you turn back to family. We'll get to that in just a moment. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21, but this riotous living, this ideal about, you know, I've always been home. Mom and dad has always been hard on me. They always wanted me to do this. They always wanted me to do that. And those this and that things were the right things. But you didn't like that. You don't like that. So therefore, you want to get out on your own. You want to be like everybody else in the world, not in the church. As all I've ever known was, was, was going to worship service on Sunday morning, Sunday morning Bible class, evening worship, Wednesday night, and whenever there was a gospel meeting, we had to go. I don't like that. I don't like being, you know, the, 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 the child that, that everybody's looking at and calling me, uh, you know, goody two-shoes or the do-gooder. I want to be like the world. I want to show the world what I have when I really don't have anything. Right, just living. Galatians chapter 5 and the verse is 21. What does God's word say about riotous living? We're going to go back up just a little bit. We're going to, we're going to get all of these right here because I believe that we need to look at them. He says in verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are uh, evident, sexual immorality, Impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dis uh, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. God. Yeah. So is righteous living good to go out there and party? Party. Party as the, the song goes to the break of dawn? What good happens at the dark? For you, being a child of God, to want to be out there in the dark. What, what good is happening? Nothing. Nothing at all. You know, some of you don't understand the, the concept of being home before the street light comes, home, uh, comes on. Talking to someone yesterday and they said, you know, it gets dark around 10 o'clock. And I was looking, I was thinking, it gets dark before 10 o'clock. Especially out in the country where there's no city lights. You know it gets dark earlier than that. But what we have to understand is that when we're out there in the dark doing whatever we choose to do, somebody is looking. Somebody is looking for you to come home. Somebody is looking for you to stay a little bit longer. Somebody is looking for you to make the right choices. Someone is looking for you because you're the one that has all the money. Somebody somewhere is looking for you because they want what you have. We need to take this in consideration as we talk about one being prodigal, one being away from the, the fold of God, one being in a place where he, he's a stranger. But yet again, if you got the money, people welcome you as a friend until it's all gone and then they don't know you. So, so let's back up and let, let's go look at some things uh, in Luke chapter 15. We're going to read it and then we're going to talk about it. We're going to examine it. We, we're going to see, you know, if we are in this situation. In Luke chapter 15, starting with the 11th verse, some of the things I've already said, but we're going to read them again so that you may know that this is the word of God. I, don't, I can't, you know, when I look at this, I'm not trying to, to, to make these things up. I'm not trying to put my opinion in there. I'm not trying to put what I think or what I feel. I'm trying to get across to you what the word of God says, and hopefully each one of us will look at it and we'll do what's right. Yeah. 
He says in verse 11 of Luke chapter 15, and he said there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Let's stop right there for a second. Somebody was watching him. Someone was watching him feed those pigs. And they knew that, that he was hungry, but they would not feed him. You got a job to do, and you better do that. You better make sure that everything I give you to give to those pigs, you give it to them. Can you imagine that? Not even allowing you to eat with the pigs? But I want you to realize this, that it wasn't the, the people that hired him, it wasn't their fault that he was in this condition. It wasn't his father's fault that he was in this condition. It wasn't his brother's fault that he was in this condition. And it most certainly was not God's fault. You know whose fault it was? It was his fault. And you know what we have to do? We have to step back and we have to look at self. And we have to do as the young man did. We have to have a talk with self. You know, a lot of times people say, you know, it's okay to, to talk to yourself. Just don't answer yourself. Sometimes we need to answer self. Amen. And we need to be hoping that self will give you the right answer. Let's look and see what happened here in verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? And I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hard servants. Here he is, reasoning with himself, talking to himself, thinking to himself. He's awake now. He's alert now. He, he realized that, that what he has done was wrong. But he also realized this, that he removed himself. And as he removed himself, he, he's not, you know, saying, I'm going to go back to my father and say, you know I'm your son. You, you know you owe me this and you owe me that. No, the father had already given him his portion. So he, he wasn't thinking like that. What he was thinking was this. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Again, there the father was looking for him to come home. He, he went to a far country, and his father, maybe he had went around the, the cities there looking for him. The Bible doesn't say that. But that's what we're supposed to do, are we not? When somebody leaves, we're supposed to go looking for them. But he moved to a far country, but now he's coming home. And the father ran to him. And look what the Bible says in verse 21. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Well, what was his sin? His sin was this, asking for his portion before his father died. That was his sin before his father. What was his sin before God? Asking for his portion before it was his time. Going out with that riotous living, partying, well, whatever that party consisted of, he was guilty of it. And he had sinned against heaven. 
I believe that there are times where we sin against heaven. We sin against God. And we don't want to get that right because we say, no one has seen us. God sees you. Amen. God knows everything that we do. Amen. And so we need to get those things right. And remember, there are consequences to our sins. Amen. It may not always be in our favor. It may cost us some things. And so let's be willing to, to pay the price. If you want to play, you're going to have to pay. And we have to understand that. But something good happened out of this. Again, this young man was, was humbled. And in 1 Peter chapter 5 and the verse is 6. 1 Peter chapter 5 and the verse is 6. It says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. I believe we, we see a good example of that right here with the prodigal son. That he humbled himself before God. And God was, was willing to, to lift him up at the proper time. And the proper time wasn't out there when he was feeding those swine. That wasn't the proper time. The proper time wasn't out there when he was out there partying with those so-called friends. That wasn't the proper time. The proper time was when he came back home. And when he came back home with the father even kissing him and hugging on him, having compassion on him, he still did what he was supposed to do. And what was that? He had a, a repentant heart. And he did what was right before God. He did what was right before his father. See, a lot of times we, we don't want to confess that we have sinned. But this young man, as he had this conversation with himself, you know, we, we hear that person that is laid up in a hospital bed that hasn't been to worship service in months before he got in that hospital bed. But once he was there, he said, if I ever get out of this bed, I'm going to worship God. Mm -hmm. And God allows him to get better. He gets out of that bed or she gets out of that bed. Still haven't seen him. <laughs> that young man's conversation didn't lead to that, did it? That conversation didn't lead, you know, to him, you know, coming from feeding those swine and getting close to home and changing his mind. That conversation, it didn't do that. It didn't lead him there. But where it did lead him was to say to his father, I have sinned, in verse 21, against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly, quickly now, don't, 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 don't take your time, don't mess around. Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and, and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. I don't know how long the son was gone. But, but I, I, I do know this. As I read this parable, it says, bring the fatted calf. You know, he probably was thinking in his mind when his son left, we need to put this calf up and we need to fatten him up because I know one day he's coming back home. And when he come back home, that's the calf I want. You, you didn't hear him question and say, what calf is that? No, the calf would have already been let put aside. So bring now the fatted calf and kill it and let's, let us eat and celebrate. For this is my, I want you to look at this now, for this is my servant, for this is my long lost friend. No, that's not what the father said, is it? He said, for this is my son was dead and is alive again. So not only did, did the son think that my father's dead because I'm asking him for this inheritance, but the father knew that his son was dead, separated away from the family, not knowing if he was going to ever see him again, but he said he was dead, but now he's alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. It's nothing like a good celebration, is it? 
especially when someone that has been lost has been found especially when someone has been separated away from God but now has come home dead and now alive not laid up in a hospital bed or you know there in a coma no he was out there in the world dead but now he has come back home he has come to his senses and we need more people like that to come to their senses to realize there is but one God Amen. and there is only one way to please him Amen. and that is to do what he says Amen. so we have to go out and we have to look for people and the Bible says in the book of James the chapter is 5 and the verse is 20 James chapter 5 and the verse is 20 verse 19 and 20 my brothers if anyone among you wonders from the truth and someone brings him back let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins now i want you to picture this just for a moment here the son comes home and the father sees him and he's been looking for him now and he sees him and he turns his back on him and he slams the door what do you think would happen to that young man you know, that young man probably would have thought of several things. First off, now I'm not blaming anybody else. It's my fault. Second off, you know, second thought, I had this conversation with myself and I said I was going back home and I was going to tell my father I sinned against heaven, I sinned against you, but now I see my father don't want me. I'm going right back out into the world. They don't want me either. But I'm going back out there. Or he could have thought this if that would have happened. We know it did not, but if it would have happened, and it does happen, I'm going to find somebody somewhere that does want me, that want to accept me because I'm willing to come back and do what is right. We need to understand that it is not for us to pick and to choose who comes back to the fold. Our responsibility is to welcome them back. To be glad that they have come to their senses and they're ready to do what's right. Amen. But a lot of us fall into the category of the oldest son. We're jealous now because someone has come back home and somebody else is getting the attention. We're jealous. We're envious of them. And we're not asking for, for, for you to give us anything special, but we're complaining because we never had anything special. Oh yeah, yes, you have had something special. You've had family. You've had the good food day in and day out. You've had the love that, that, that the oldest or the other is experiencing now. You, you've had that love. And that's what the father had to explain to the older son. Because here he comes now, have been obedient unto his father, Still working hard, you know, to, to build up the family name. And this is what he says. Now, now his older son was in the field in verse 25. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him back safe and safe. So many lessons right here. He didn't wait for the older brother to come back in order for them to start celebrating. You know, Anita has to tell the story from time to time at the baptism of Tim and the baptism of Chris that she wasn't there. She had to tell that story. Why? Because she was working. We didn't call her up and say, hey, hey, I didn't call her up and say, hey, baby, I'm going to get ready to baptize Timmy Chris. How soon can you get here? No, she missed those things. That baptism wasn't about her. The baptism was about them. This celebration wasn't about the oldest son. This celebration was about the youngest son. 
And that is what we need to remember when a person is ready to be obedient to the gospel, nothing nor nobody should stop them nor slow them down. We said, Tim, missed the baptism of Justin. And many of us can say the same, that we have missed the baptism of this person or that person. It is not a planned event. It's something that happens any day of the week, any Man. hour of the day. Man. This young son came home. He didn't send a letter, said, I'm on my way. He had the letter in his mind. And that letter was very, very short. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. But here the oldest son is now, asking what is going on, what has happened. And it is told to him, your brother has come and your father has killed a petted cat because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. You, you know what some of us say, his loss, more cat for me. <laughs> He's mad. We don't want you in here if you're mad. We want you to go back out there, go back to the field and work. Get out there in that heat and come to yourself. Come back and say, Father, I've sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven. I've had jealousy within my heart. I was envious of this person. The Bible says in verse 29, but he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. Many years. He was a good son, wasn't he? He was a good son until this point. Now he's disobedient. He don't want to do what's right. But when this son of yours came, he was devoured, who has devoured your property with prostitutes and killed a fat, and you killed a fatted calf for him? And he said to his son, son, you have always been with me. And, and all that, all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. See, there's a time to celebrate and there's a time not to celebrate. There's a time to, to have fun and there's a time not to have fun. See, when you lose someone, it, it takes a lot out of you. When you lose someone to the world, it takes a lot out of you. And, and, you, and there you are. You're consumed with this. And you're praying and you're hoping and you're searching that you find this individual or that individual finds himself and comes back to the fold. And then you rejoice. It's not that you forget about everybody else around you, but your focus is on this person to ensure that they realize that God put them right back where they have fallen from. We need to realize that. And what we need to do is we need to go out as Jesus came to this earth to do, to seek and to save that which was lost. We need to go out and do as we find in Scripture, and we need to teach people God's Word. We need to allow Amen. them to hear God's Word according to Romans Amen. chapter 10 and to verses 17. We need to make sure that we tell people and get them to understand that their belief needs to be in Jesus Christ. Amen. According to Acts, um, John chapter 8 and the verses 24. That they may be able to stand and make that confession that they believe that Jesus is the Son of God according to Matthew chapter 10 and the verse is 32. We need to get them to understand that, that their ways have been wrong and that they need to repent of those things unless they want to perish, according to Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and verse 5. Maybe they've never been to Christ at all and they need to be immersed in a watery grave or baptism, according to Romans chapter 6, Galatians chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3 and the verses 21. Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, as we go out and teach, we baptize and we continue to teach according to verse 20. 
We need to do what's right. Yeah. We need to continue to study. Yeah. Study the word in order that we may be able, able to help out the next man or be able to welcome the man that has been lost and that has come home. We need to grow according to 2 Peter chapter 3 and the verses 18. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How do we grow? We grow by life experiences. We grow by someone coming to us, rebuking us when we do wrong, and we accept that rebuke, and we are willing to come back to God and say, I confess my faults unto you, knowing that you are just and that you will forgive me, according to 1 John chapter 1 and the verses 9. Let's study. Let's study. Studying God's word is what's going to put us where we need to be in the very end. Showing ourselves a fruit unto him and not to the world. According to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and the verses 15. Study to show yourself a fruit unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Let's do what's right. Let's not be that prodigal individual. Let's be the faithful one. The one that is waiting to hear in the end. Enter in my good and faithful servant. And not the one that is caught up in sin and dies in sin and told to depart from me, you work of iniquity, I know you're not. If you're here and you're not a Christian and you want to become one, the opportunity is yours. You don't have to check with anybody. You need to check in with God. Amen. You need to put Christ on through the watery grave of baptism. Then rise into walk a newness of life. Be an example to someone else. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let's do what's right. If you're here and you're straight away, we're asking you and encouraging you to come back to the fold before it is too late. As we stand and sing the invitation hymn, we ask you to please come. Tis the grandest thing through the ages wrong. Tis the grandest thing for the mortal tongue. Tis the grandest thing that the world a song. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Tis the grandest theme in the earth or main. Tis the grandest theme for the mortal strain. Tis the grandest theme till the world again. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Is the grandest theme that the tidings roll to the guilty heart, to the sinful soul. Look to God in faith, he will make thee whole. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Page 399. 399. There's a land that is fairer than thee, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Savior waits over the way. To prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. 
sky. We shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above. We will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beautiful shore. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee, O oh God, for being able to help obey thy will. Yes. And became a child of thine. Amen. Father, we pray that each and every one of us mm -hmm. that will strive to continue to build the life of thee. Amen. And Father, we ask thee, if it be thy will, mm -hmm. we know that you can do it. Amen. And that's, we pray that for Brother Brian's sister, daughter that she come through her surgery yeah. with no ill effects Amen. and father we are just thankful that we are able to be called thy children yeah. Amen. Yeah. and let us not forget this and let us assemble ourselves and continue to live in the way that you would have us to live. Amen. But this and all other blessings that you do ask in our son's name. Amen. 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 Amen.